Welcome to our time of devotion in this new year. We are delighted that you have joined us. As we prepare to begin, let us listen to some reflective music. The scripture passage for today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 45. We'll just be reading verses 35 through 39 together. Hear now the word of God. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found Jesus, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. Jesus answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And Jesus went throughout all Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Open our hearts and minds, gracious God, to the words just read and the words to come that they might point to you, the Word made flesh, Jesus the Christ. It is in his name that we pray, amen. So here we are together, just barely into 2023. You know, I love the new year because it gives me an opportunity to reflect on the previous year and to start over with new intentions to live more fully into who God created me to be. I used to do New Year's resolutions, but like most people, they never really stuck long. I read that only 8% of people who write resolutions actually keep them for the entire year. I have moved more into intentions for the year. I recently read that goal setting and resolutions are about what I want to do. Intention setting is about who I want to be and who I think God wants me to be. For the last several years, I have chosen a word or a phrase as my touchstone. Everything then emanates from that word to help me stay focused on my life goal. For example, last year, my word was attentive. The idea is that I tried to be more attentive to the people and things that were in front of me, as well as to God's movement in my life. I tried to slow down enough to be attentive with all my senses. I even scripted the word attentive in gold wire and hung it in my home so I would see it every day. I wrote the word in my prayer journal, so I saw it most days as a part of my daily prayer. Honestly, I think this intention helped me to be more aware of God, and I was more present in my life. So I tended to enjoy people, food, beverages, nature, and life more fully. Well, our scripture passage from today reminds me of a habit that I am always trying to keep in my life, and that is quiet time in the morning, time to do devotional reading, 
intentional praying, reflection, meditating, and journaling. Like Jesus, I need to get after this business while it is still dark. If I don't spend time with God in this very intentional way, first thing in the morning, I find it often doesn't get done. Oh, I pray here and there, of course, but I find it hard to carve out the time for the devotional reading, focused prayer, reflection, and journaling once the world has awakened. I want and need this habit even when life is really busy, even when deadlines are creeping up on me and stress is building. Honestly, I need this time with God even more when life is ramping up. But I noticed something new in Jesus' behavior when I read the passage this time. Jesus is certainly modeling a healthy rhythm of work, rest, and prayer. He isn't always on the move, healing and preaching and teaching. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus often prays alone, turning to God for strength and guidance during times of stress, temptation, and decision-making. But did you notice how Jesus was willing to be interrupted from his quiet time with God? When Simon and his companions found Jesus, they said, come on, Jesus, let's go. Everyone's looking for you. Jesus might have said, tell everyone they can just wait a fat minute. I need to recharge my batteries. I need my quiet time with God. And when I'm done taking care of me, I will come out and help those people. But he didn't say that. Instead, Jesus got up immediately to serve. You see, he never lost sight of his ultimate purpose, which means that sometimes he has to sacrifice some of his own comfort of having a perfectly balanced life of work, rest, and prayer. William Barclay wrote that a great doctor once said that the duty of medicine is sometimes to heal, often to afford relief, and always to bring consolation. That duty was always upon Jesus, and he knew it. In fact, his annual intention would be right along the lines from this passage. As Jesus rose from his knees, he said, let us go on to the neighboring towns so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. When we know what we are here to do and who we are called to be, it shapes our prayers, our words, and our actions, even when it costs us something. So how about you? What is the purpose of your life? How do you want to be remembered? How might God be wanting to shape you more and more into God's image? As we grapple with these questions, our intentions may just take on the shape of a cruciform. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we place our entire lives in your hands. Shape us and mold us into your likeness. Stir in us a desire to grow closer to you so that we prioritize our quiet time while remaining flexible and open to the needs of others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.